button. So I'm going to go here to log in. All right, and you're going to click log in. So the first step is we need to connect Yabbly to eBay. Yabbly is a price tracker. So basically what it does is um, every 30 minutes it goes to Amazon, checks the price of the item, and then goes to eBay, updates your listing for that item to be the correct price so that you make money. So that means that if the Amazon item goes up in price or goes out of stock or something like that, those changes will be reflected on your eBay listing for the item. Uh, before we were using Yabbly, we had a bunch of issues where stuff would go out of stock and buyers would be placing for orders that we couldn't fill. Buyers would get mad, leave us bad feedback, all that kind of stuff. So Yabbly has prevented all that and they're very reasonably priced. So first step is to connect to eBay. So we're going to click that and then we have to sign into our eBay account. All right, so this, by accepting this, this is just going to allow Yabbly to do everything that it needs to do behind the scenes. So we're going to come here and we're going to hit Agree. And now Yabbly is going to be able to do everything. So we have to configure the settings, of course, and I'll show you how to do that. So let's hop on in really quickly. Notice right here that because we just made an account and haven't paid for anything yet, we're on the free trial. So we're going to come down here to Settings. And we have to enter the PayPal email address from eBay. So we're just going to paste that in or, you know, type it in. And then desired profit. We recommend setting this at $2.50. If you do it too high, you won't get very many sales and too low, then you're just doing a lot of work for not that much money. So $2.50 seems to be the sweet spot. Also, um, quantity of your items. This is basically um, is going to use up your limits. So if you are able to list a thousand items, then you're going to want to set this to one because if you used it, if you set it to three and listed a thousand items, then that would be using up three thousand of your limits. Uh, but if you set it to one, then you know one thousand items times one is a thousand. So that's why we set this to one. one. If your limits are very high, if you can do ten thousand items, then you can just up this number a lot, and you could make it maybe ten or whatever you want. But we we keep it at one because it can be tough when you have a, a new account with lower limits. So anyway. Um, that's set up correctly, that's set up correctly, the defaults here are all fine. And then this is the protection strategy, so if it's out of stock on Amazon, then you can just select, um, you know, you can either make the price four times higher and hope nobody buys it, which seems kind of silly, or you can just make it out of stock on eBay, which is what you're going to want to do. So leave that set there. Um, these are some labels that just help you track your stuff through Yabbly, but you don't really need them right now. So we're going to hit save. And then we're going to come over to business profiles. So uh, we set our uh, business profiles up on eBay, and we're just going to click here, update policies, and Yabbly's grabbing them from eBay right now. And now these should be updated. So we have to drop down and select PayPal immediate pay, my return policy, free fast shipping. We're going to save that. Now we go to monitor profiles, and right here it wants the registered email address. It already seems to have it, but I'm going to paste it one more time and hit save. And now this stuff doesn't matter. This The return policy and shipping policy is only for if you're not using business profiles. But we are, so they don't matter. But what does matter here is item location. Item location is one thing that's caused a lot of problems for a lot of drop shippers. It didn't used to matter at all. You could have it set to your hometown and your home zip code, and then you'd be fine. But eBay's recently been making some changes that means that doesn't work anymore. They want to make sure that this is accurate. And when they check the shipping information and the tracking numbers, they want to make sure they match uh, where you're saying you're shipping from and make sure that you're you know, actually being honest with the customer. So what you can do to uh, you know, still comply with all of eBay's policies, if we click over here and read the full item location policy, uh, they've got sort of a summary here, but you can click to read the full thing. And now notice here, it says, where is it? It says, required accurate description of item location, a valid zip code for item location, except when using blah, 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 or for items that will be shipped from multiple locations. So since Amazon has multiple different warehouses, we don't know which one they're going to ship from. It's just going to be whichever warehouse is closest to the buyer. Uh, our, all of our items are going to be shipped from multiple locations. So I'm just going to copy that. Or you could just type it in and paste in multiple locations. I'll capitalize it here to make it look pretty. But um, and, then, and then we're going to leave the zip code blank. And that's fine. You don't have to include a zip code because you have to include a zip code unless items will be shipped from multiple locations. So we're just going to say multiple locations there, and then that's all good. And we'll click Save. 
Um, if you do not do this and you do your own uh, thing, you're going to have to like edit that in eBay because they will, you know, it'll, it'll work fine for a little bit and then they'll start taking you down and you'll get suspended and it's going to give you a lot of issues. So just make sure you got multiple locations in there. So now let's move on to filters and everything is good at the default except for this one setting here. So uh, because we use RB ship and we are able to buy add on item support, uh, we can go ahead and check this add on items are basically just really cheap items on Amazon. The purpose of them is. Uh, Amazon created these so that you could just throw it in your cart, get your cart over the total to qualify for free shipping or whatever it is. Um, but you can't buy an add-on item by itself. So RB Ship, which is the auto ordering software, has a workaround where they are able to buy add-on items just by themselves. Um, if you were trying to do stuff manually, you wouldn't want to check this because those are really, really tough to order on your own. But if you're using RB Ship, which is what we recommend, then you're going to want to check that because that, you know, that will get everything listed and won't give you errors. So we're going to hit save. Let's come on over to templates. So this is the default template from Yabli. Now, one thing that I've noticed is a lot of the time, um, you know, eBay's just weird. They have different policies. Not everything that's for sale on Amazon is allowed to be sold on eBay and vice versa. So uh, there are certain keywords that can trigger eBay to freak out and be like, oh, no, like, like you know, for example, I sold a scope for a, for a gun. And, uh, you know, it's just a scope. It's just like a, you know, a binoculars um, for a gun. And because in the description it said that you could put it on an AR-15, I got a bad mark on my account and it's, you know, it was violating their firearms policy or whatever. So uh, everything else about this thing was fine. It's just specifically that I, I mentioned in the description this could be attached to an AR-15. So what I recommend doing is that you're going to want to come here and we're just going to delete item description. Now, we're still going to have the, uh, this looks weird, but this is basically just a placeholder for whatever the Amazon title is of the item. Um, and then this is going to be bullet points about the item. Uh, and then, but the description usually has a lot of extra information and a, a lot of it is not really needed. So you can do whatever you want. You can leave it, but I would recommend just to avoid, you know, eBay violations. Let's just get rid of that. Uh, cause most people don't even read the description on eBay anyway. Also right here, it says image. Uh, you can leave that in if you want, but I just prefer to not have it in there. And then we'll just leave it at item title. And then the bullet points about the item from Amazon. There's also some information here about shipping. Uh, you can review all this and make sure it seems accurate. I'm not going to mess with it. Um, I think it's all probably fine, but if you want to skim over this, that'd probably be a good idea because this is the template that's going to be used on everything. They also have a couple other templates, but um, I do highly recommend taking out the description because sometimes the description could cause you problems. So we're just going to do the title and the bullet points, and then that's fine, and we'll hit save. And let's move on to auto messages. So there is a way to set some of this stuff up through eBay, um, but this is like send a message to the buyer after the item's purchased, leave good feedback. So I would say, yeah, turn that on, leave good feedback for the buyer after it's purchased. You can edit that if you want. There's a way to do it through eBay once you have the 1,000 item store, which we already have set up. Um, but this is easier because we just check a box rather than having to mess with settings. Um, and then there's some other stuff here. I just leave all this stuff off. I haven't really played with it. You can play with it if you want, but there doesn't really... You don't need to. Just check this one box and you're going to be good. And we'll hit save. And that just leaves... Uh, it's impossible to leave bad feedback as a store. So just always leave them good feedback. It makes buyers happy and it makes them more likely to leave you good feedback. So now we're going to come over to accounts. If you have multiple eBay accounts that you're... Or multiple Yabali accounts and you want to track them all... Each new eBay account needs a new uh, Yabali account to monitor it, right? So you can just link and you just enter the email and password for the other Yabali account, and then you'll have a little quick switch button here. So you just hit one click, and then bam, you're in the other Yabali accounts, and you can do that from anywhere. So it makes it really easy. You can have, you know, 10 accounts in here, and you just boop, and then click the account you want to be in, and it makes it really easy. So you just do that. Also, um, there is a way that you can link your VAs up to be able to manage stuff in Yabali, but uh, honestly, your VAs probably won't even really need access to it. Now, auto rules, this you only get if you have a big enough plan in Yabali, uh, but you can start using these, like, start raising your profit after this many sales. So you can say, like, wait till I get 15 sales, then raise my profit by 15 cents, and then if it's not selling for one day, you know, every day it doesn't sell, drop the price by five cents, but don't drop more than a dollar. Like, it, it gives you some nice advanced settings, but you have to have... Um, a certain plan to be able to do that. Uh, also, I should mention, if you have any questions, you can just click right here. Their support is amazing. Now, under the advanced right here, this is your Vero strictness. So this is basically just going to filter out items 
that uh, you might not want or that could get your account in trouble. And their system is, uh, it does catch most everything, but um, th their thing is, is too strict. If you're doing very small batches, it can be fine. But if you're doing very, very large batches, it takes, uh, you know, you, you say you go to list 10,000 items, and then it's going to cut out half of your items to drop you down to 5,000. And it does it does it by filtering words that it thinks are bad um, that eBay might have problems with. If you're trying to do this on your own without buying a list from drop-source.com, then yeah, you're totally going to want these because that's going to be hard. But you know, then you're going to have issues with stuff not selling because people haven't done the research on uh, the items to make sure they're going to be you know good and the ones that are actually going to get you sales. So you're going to want these on if you're trying to do it on your own. But if you bought a list, you'll be fine to just take both of these off and just leave it at brand and you can just go ahead and click save anyway guys that's it for this video if you're new to drop shipping and you're trying to figure out how to get started i've got a full free set of training videos down there link in the description it goes over everything you need to know about how to get started making money online and the average person following my method makes around 500 to 800 dollars profit per month after expenses for each thousand item ebay store that they have set up and running they're really not that hard to get started if you've got any questions about anything drop shipping related feel free to hit me up on facebook i'll put a link down there as well as a link to a group that i started with hundreds of other drop shippers that you can join i post new content on this channel every couple days so go ahead and subscribe and click the notifications and I'll see you back here with another video in a couple days.